So track day update. He made it to Ross on Y, and then the slave cylinder gave out the clutch because clever dick like me, and I'm sure people top not fit a concentric one. So you can he fix them on the road? Has now been waiting hours for recovery. See my little trail of fluid. Yeah, so gonna get dropped off at the hotel, have a weekend with the boys and uh, yeah, and take it home and I suppose we'll have to fix it at some point. Welcome to my Landau track video. This is Sunday, track day was on Friday. We didn't even make it. We didn't get a lap in. We broke down in Ross on Y and as you can tell by the assortment of bits there, it was a clutch related issue. And yes, I'm well aware a lot of people told me not to fit a concentric clutch slave cylinder after I'd fitted it. Because if it breaks, you are stranded and it's an engine out job. Well, guess what's coming up? Engine out, because the clutch slave cylinder has failed and filled my bell housing up and then the floor with clutch fluid just after I filled up in Ross on Y. So, um... I have my own theory for why it's gone, um, and I'm welcome for other people to have a guess, but there we go. My clutch fluid has always been horrible and mucky, and I always put it down to um, having an old slave cylinder and whatnot, and then when I changed it, the new stuff then got mucky and I never really thought about it. So it's empty. Never really thought about it, but um, on the Thursday before I went down onto the track day, I bled the brakes and the clutch and it was minging, proper minging. There were bits in it and everything where it came out the, the bleed. And I think the master cylinder has broken down somehow or something's in it or I don't know. It's contaminating the fluid. I've dragged it through the slave cylinder and it's bust a seal and it lasted as long as it lasted. And then it broke. Um, I don't think it's popped off because when we bled it, the pedal went to the floor a couple of times, but came back and then it was fine for 130 miles of motorway driving, but still gear changes in that. Um, and when you fill the reservoir up, you still get a pedal until it obviously runs out of, of fluid and then, uh, then sticks on the floor. So I am going, it's Sunday, I'm going to just strip as much as I can. And then on, um, Monday night, I'm nipping down to my mates. Well, it's about 80 miles away in Chelmsford to pick up an engine crane, but I'll be in the Tesla which means it will cost me about three quid. Um, so yeah, I'll go and get the engine crane. I'm, I think I got away with lifting it out on the rafters last time, but I just don't feel comfortable doing it again. So I will, um, yeah, get it out this week and then decide whether to fix the concentric slave cylinder or refit the old school stuff, which I'm only missing the one spring, two little springs. I need a new release bearing because that's knackered. And I need a, whatever it's called, a couple of circ clips for the slave. So yeah, and then obviously the seals. And it will give me another opportunity to seal up that bolt that goes into the gearbox, which has been leaking. So, you know, it's not all lost, but um, yeah engine out for the third time. Step number one, you get some focus, drain the coolant with this very useful bung and rad, and because I'm now very tight, I'm saving it to reuse. Right, progress so far. We have the carbs off, heater hose off, I've got to do the oil pressure hose, um, rad's off, 
the alternators off. I've refitted the uh, crank pulley, but it is leaking, not the crank pulley seal, but the half moon. I don't know whether I'm gonna fix that or not. It's, <sighs> if I knew I could fix it, I would, but I just think it's still gonna leak somewhere. We'll come back to that. <sighs> Heater disconnected, temp gauge disconnected. I'm gonna undo the exhaust. Um, I don't think I can get it off without doing the engine mount and I'm not going to do the engine mount until my engine crane arrives, um, which will be tomorrow night. So yeah, I'm going to undo the exhaust, get that off and then, I don't know, just get tidied up and get ready for it, I suppose. But yeah, it seems to be a lot easier when you're not rushing. I mean, I'm just mooching about and doing this. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in the exhaust, two engine mounts and the uh, gearbox bolts away from getting it off, which really isn't that much, to be honest, so, bonza. Righty-ho, decent progress. Starter. That's the old alternator, sorry. New alternator. Um, have ugh, all the manifold bolts out all of the gearbox bolts out um, let me get a torch so yeah all out all ready to go it's literally just the the engine mount but i don't really see the point in getting onto that until i've got a crane to lift it out with so i want to be able to take the weight off the engine um had a slight problem so i've lost my keys and all my tools are locked in the boot so <coughs> I've had no Imperial spanners, but um, yeah, it's really quite easy to get to this stage. I've just been plodding along. So um, yeah, Tuesday night, I should think I'll have it um, have it out. I've brought my engine stand back. I'll get it on the stand and we'll dig into the gearbox and decide whether to keep the concentric clutch or go back to um, what has worked for many years. Over and out. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but this is the master cylinder, and I'm 99% sure I haven't fitted this, that it was already on the car. Um, and I don't know how to re rebuild it. I think probably got to jazz some air up and blow it out. I can't see a circlip um, to remove. I might have another look, see I've got the initial one and circle it off. But if you put a screwdriver down it, that is what is in it. So, um, I mean, it's like a paste. I don't know what it is. I mean, I'll try and get the sunlight. It's right down there in the bottom. I don't know if you can see. But, um, I mean, logic would say that I remember it always being dark and murky with this external slave cylinder, which I thought was the problem because it was always leaking, which it wasn't. It was the gearbox leaking. Um, and now it's murky again when it's got effectively, I mean, apart from a very short run of maybe 10 inches of pipe, it's all brand new, brand new pipe, brand new slave, brand new return and it's got the same problem. So I will wait until I get the slave cylinder out, but I think this might be the, um, this might be the culprit, bloody thing. Probably the only thing I haven't replaced. Damn it. Got the plunger out with a bit of a bash, but let's look at, that was all that I could see coming out the tube. When I bled it, it was just black and with bits in it. So the actual plunger, which is here, I mean, it immaculate, it's not, but it, it doesn't look bad. No. No real 
obvious signs of wear. And I know you can't see much down there, but that, you know, looks, you know, what you'd expect to use one to look like, but in there it's bloody horrible. So, I'm very confident that the problem originates with this. Whether it's something that's worn, or maybe there's just some debris that's got in it. But yeah, not very nice. Look what I forgot I had. An old Crisonic cleaner. So in it goes, with the last of my carburetor cleaner. I have taken off the rubber seals and the plastic and that little spring washer. Um, so it's just the metal bits in there. Um, yeah, see how that goes. Make sure I get this uh, put away before the wife comes back. Oh yeah, I don't have a wife. I can do whatever the hell I want in my kitchen, as it shows. All right, ready to get the rope on and um, and get it out. But it's coming up to five o'clock. I think I might get the um, master cylinder back in first, and then then I've got a uh, a good friend and a landowner, Mr. David Acton, coming around to give me a hand. So he's going to be here at six. So I might do the clutch while I'm waiting. Although I need to get in that space, so I probably won't. Got it. Yeah. Well, fluid everywhere. Yeah, yeah. that's what it felt like. That's gone. That's popped out, hasn't it? Oh. Words to describe Lotus ownership. Well, at the moment, I'm effing dejected, disheartened, pissed off, and just fed up with it all. Um, I'll try and put the footage together that we took but yeah this is the seal that came out of the um concentric clutch and there's the another one that's in there totally knackered which is why it's broke um using the correct well using ate 200 fluid which is dot four which should be fine but it's killed it um I don't know if it might have something to do with it, but the gearbox just leaks like a fucking sieve. I think it's out of that bolt there, even though I've sealed it up as best as I possibly can. The engine, um, yep, yeah, I did all of this and it's leaking, leaking. And bear in mind, I've cleaned this. Leaking, leaking around here, leaking. It just leaks everywhere. Um, it's just got to the point where I just can't be bothered with it anymore. I've about had enough, really. You know, I wouldn't mind it if, you know, you have problems. I mean, it's just, you know, I've got a proper sump gasket with the, the expensive sealant. I've helicoiled all of the bolts, so they're, they're all torqued to spec. I've flattened the sump, I've straightened it. Ugh, still leaks. Yeah, it just gets to the point where I just can't be asked. you know. You fix things and it still doesn't work. And it's, it's not, well, I mean, this doesn't leak, you know, but you get several goes at this. Um, yeah, just seeing that oil slick in there is just like, I can't be bothered. And, you know, I, I don't know whether this, I mean, it's a Burton power slave. They made, they're made by Titan. I'm pretty sure I haven't done anything wrong. And there is a bit of gearbox oil in there, but quite how it had got to those seals and done that I don't know but they'll probably blame me for something but you know for me there's those seals aren't specced right so I ain't going to be refitting it basically because it'll have to come back out in a year when it fails again I mean it's only done 1500 bloody miles I think so yeah I'll be going back to the external 
Salavi. Salavi and the engine, I don't know. I don't know whether I'm going to... I just don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't know whether I'm just going to sling it back in as it is because I can't be... I can't be bothered and I know if I don't put it back in straight away I'll just not do it so I think I'm about 40 quid's worth of bits away from going back to a slave I've got all of the bits in a box I'm just missing a few a few of the clips clips and whatnot but I've got everything else in there so I may as well just put that back in sling the motor in and seal the gearbox at best I can and just call it a good day and sling it in the shed and forget about it. Damn thing. Right, this is the seal that you saw in that video coming out. I thought it was easier to extract it with a bit of clutch pressure than do it manually. You can see it's degraded, it's, it's basically knackered. I have no idea what's caused this. And also it's a lot stretched. That's the replacement. Um, and that's the inner replacement. And you can see that one is in a similar state. Basically toast. I've only ever used ATE 200, which is dot four, which is what's recommended. So God knows what's gone on. But yeah, that was the, that was the problem welcome back party people it's lincolnshire's rabsy nesbitt um right we are at the stage where um i have the i've got the nose back on i've reluctantly drained my very expensive oil out of the gearbox and i have given that that one there he's been dried heated and everything and I've got the bolt ready to go back in and in typical Ollie fashion. Just losing everything right now. I just don't know where the hell I put it at. Put it over here. Hang on, I'll swing you around the other way. Right. This is meant to have a spring washer on it, but I'm going with a copper one to help with the sealing. And last time I used well seal. I'm going to use Hylamar this time. Um, I think this is what's actually in the manual. This is what all the old boys say to use, but the problem with old boys is they use this when it was probably proper stuff. And the stuff you get in 2020 or 2024 now is like, it's just like not what it was in the 70s, but we'll give it a go. Um, I just, I find it hard to do jobs like this because I'm so reluctant because I know if it fails, I'm going to be absolutely flattened. You know, if I drive this 20 miles and see it leaking out of the gearbox, I'm just going to put a match in the tank and burn the bloody thing. I don't mind it when I do something slapdash and it fails, but when I work hard and do something properly and as it should be, and it's still bad, it annoys me. And talking of badness, I spoke to the manufacturers of the concentric clutch. They were like, oh, no, never seen that before. We do do abraded seals. It's like, oh, nice. But yeah, the fluid I was using was fine. And yeah, it's failed in about a thousand miles and it's totally chewed up. So going back to the external one, just spent another hundred quid, a hundred pounds on the three clips, a thrust bearing, um, a slave cylinder rebuild kit, and what else? A new gator, for, damned if I know where mine is. Might have fallen out somewhere. 100 bloody, well, 92 pounds. I also did an interesting comparison between uh, Sue Miller, Kelverden, and Burton's. Burton's were most expensive, then Kelverden, then Sue Miller. But interestingly, Sue Miller was more expensive on everything apart from the Gator, which was 10 pounds cheaper, which put her in the lead. So, um, yeah, always pay to shop around, but Kelverden still owe me three pounds for the bit they didn't deliver i don't know why they just don't refund me it seems crazy the amount of money i spent with them and burton's the concentric slave cylinder episode means i can't spend money there anyway this must be really boring looking at a bloody bell housing i'll do something give you something to look at 
I've even got the torque wrench out. And yes, I have torqued everything in there. Beautifully torqued to how it should be. And that isn't wet, by the way. That's well sealed from last time, but it doesn't do anything on that one, so I haven't bothered again. Hi, Lamard. And I know people say less is more, but I've jammed a load in the hole. I don't care. Every woman I've said has said the opposite, so everyone I've met said the opposite. So I'm going to wind them in, do them up to 35 pounds feet, leave it for five minutes and talk it up to 45, because that's what it says. But it doesn't say that on the packet, but it sort of does. It says tighten after five, so I may as well go a little bit low so I can go up. All right, it didn't click at 35, and I suddenly thought my Hylomar might be lubricating it and I get the wrong torque reading, so I've just stopped. I'll come back in 10 minutes and waz him up. And now to fit the clutchy bits. I have a box of magic down there, several tools, and um, a memory of some pictures on the Elan forum. But off we go, let's see how we get on. Okay, so I've just placed the clutch fork and gator in there and then don't need that what do we need then you've got the bearing carrier which i think goes that way around slots in like so and then snap rings for the master cylinder slave cylinder sorry then that bad boy goes on there. I'm gonna have to figure out which way round that goes. That's gotta be the bit that touches the fingers, isn't it? That'll go on that way. And then you've also got that, which goes in there. And that is held on by these piggy little clippy things. As far as I understand, the big S goes in that and the small little C goes in the, the arm. And then to finish it off, we got, you got two of those obviously. And then you got this here clip, which I believe goes around and that away clips over there and into them there are holes and you put little dabs of grease on that that and that not there there and there something like that anyway i haven't got my tripod so you're just gonna have to come back in two, two minutes because that's what it'll take me to get this fitted nice they're on looks all right i haven't greased this Pretty sure I don't need to. It shouldn't. Mm. No, it's going to be moving up and down. I'm going to grease it. I haven't read not to. I'm going to do it. And there we bloody go. I'll probably wipe a bit, bit of that grease off. But um, yeah. What's that? Sure, what that rattling is. Oh, it's the fork hitting the nose, which it's meant to. Right, all done. Just got to put the um, rod, slave, and the uh, tubing in there, the hose. Line, line is the word I'm looking for. Then it's just going to be spending tomorrow morning just getting in order, getting the car halfway out of the garage. Ready for that old donkey to go back in. David is coming over to help me again, so I'll have to tidy the garage, otherwise he'll moan. Brace myself for him just tutting at the state of it. But it, it works, doesn't it? Oh, uh, it eventually clicked. I was getting worried. It was kept on leaning on that torque wrench, but if that's not sealed, then fuck it, the car can burn. Right, I haven't filmed it. Going back in. 
just too busy, but this is Sunday. I've checked everything. It's got everything in it, apart from the bonnet. Had the electrics on for a little while. Nothing's burnt down. All gone terribly wrong. All feels normal. So let's see if it starts and then let's see if it moves. <sighs> Nervous. All right, fuel pump. Well, actually, I'll turn it over without the fuel pump. Just let it build a bit of oil pressure. Okay, I think I know why that is. I'm not sure I've connected the starter motor. In fact, I'm very sure I haven't. <laughs> Let's check. Well, that that will be a very hot cable, so yeah, we're, we're undone. So it's this one here. Um, you can see the front of the starter motor. I can't quite get a finger on it. Um, yeah, yeah, I haven't got anything on it. Right, um, I'll report back in two minutes. All right, here we go again with the starter motor connected. So neutral. Let's just see if she turns over, which she should. No. Huh. Hmm. Okay. That's um interesting. don't know what to do. Why wouldn't that go? That's on. The only thing is, has the battery got enough charge? Well, let's go and check that. Right, battery was a little low, so I put the NOCO on it. Is that going to make a difference? No. Nada. Nothing. Ugh. 10 house points to whoever guessed what was wrong. Solenoid isn't working because, dun 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 dun, haven't put the earth back on the carbs. Right, back in a sec. Right, third time lucky or fourth time lucky? I'm sure it's gonna go now, so this should just turn over and not start. Perfect. So, give it some fuel. Let those carburetors fill up. Give it a wee bit of choke. Right, there's the carbs full. One, two, three. Fourth time lucky, plug leads were in the wrong order. They're now corrected. Hopefully we should just get, uh, get it to fire up. Right, that's one part of the puzzle. Next one is, select a gear. I think I might know why that will be. No. No, there's no shock. Oh, why is it stalled? Okay. Well, in neutral, I can roll it. Just select all the gears. 
gears nicely. Tell you what, I don't like the way those leads are rooted. I'm gonna put them, put them over the top. All right, that's a little better. 